NASA plans to build a base on the moon as soon as the middle of this decade, and now we are starting to get an idea of what it will look like. NASA submitted its plans for a lunar base camp to the National Space Council in a 13-page report entitled NASA's Plan for Sustained Lunar Exploration and Development on April 2nd. The plans are part of NASA's Artemis program to send humans back to the moon as early as 2024. As part of the Artemis program, a gateway outpost in lunar orbit will serve as a command and control center for operations on the moon's surface. Astronauts will live in the outpost and conduct scientific research there. Spacecraft arriving from Earth will dock at the gateway, and lunar modules will travel to and from the outpost to the moon. NASA plans to build its Artemis base camp near the moon's south pole. The base camp will provide a fixed outpost for exploration and in the long term would include a landing pad and infrastructure for power, radiation shielding and waste disposal and storage. A lunar terrain vehicle or LTV will transport crew around base. Like the Apollo program's lunar roving vehicle, the LTV will be an unenclosed rover. Astronauts driving it will wear spacesuits that have been specifically designed for the Artemis program. For exploration beyond the lunar base camp, astronauts will use a habitable mobility platform, a larger pressurized rover with living space and amenities for trips across the moon lasting up to 45 days. The habitable mobility platform will be the primary residence for surface missions, but a Lunar Foundation surface habitat at the base camp will provide a more permanent habitat for as many as four crew members on shorter surface stays. In an April 3rd article on its website, NASA said it envisions sending four astronauts to the Gateway for a multi-month stay to simulate a trip to Mars. Later, two crew members would travel to the lunar surface and explore with the habitable mobility platform. The four astronauts would then be reunited aboard the Gateway for another multi-month stay to simulate the return trip to Earth. NASA said these missions will be by far the longest duration human deep space missions in history. NASA has a wild idea for a giant telescope that would make the moon look like the Death Star from Star Wars. NASA is funding an early-stage concept to build a giant telescope in a crater on the far side of the moon through its NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts program, the space agency announced on April 7th. The proposal for the Lunar Crater Telescope would use robots to hoist a wire mesh with a receiver suspended over a crater. At a kilometer in diameter, it would be the largest filled aperture radio telescope in the solar system. The telescope's location on the moon's far side would physically isolate it from electromagnetic interference caused by human activity, as well as allow it to observe longer wavelengths that are blocked by the Earth's ionosphere. This would allow scientists to observe fingerprints left by the Big Bang, as the universe expanded exponentially in less than a trillionth of a second after it came into existence. NASA has given the project $125,000 for a nine-month study of the concept. Other projects that received funding from the NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts program include a lunar landing pad and a robotic explorer for Saturn's moon Enceladus. NASA announced ambitious expectations of returning to the moon by 2024. According to NASA's website, the U.S. Space Agency plans to launch three Artemis moon missions, as well as five other separate launches to build a lunar orbit station in the next five years. Artemis 1 is an uncrewed flight set to be launched in 2020 and will test the spacecraft capabilities of reaching lunar orbit. Artemis 2 will be a manned mission and is expected to be launched two years later. It would take a different route than the previous flight and its target is to take a space crew around the moon. Around the same time, NASA will be sending parts of a lunar orbital station named the Gateway to the moon via private companies. The Gateway will consist of a power and propulsion element and a small habitat module. Artemis 3 will take a space crew and dock at the Gateway before the crew makes its way down to the moon via a lander. According to NASA, all three Artemis missions will be launched by NASA's Space Launch System on the Orion spacecraft. NASA said this is part of its plan to ultimately make its way from the moon to the Red Planet to make human exploration of Mars a reality. Carnegie Mellon University and Astrobotic, a space robotics company, have been awarded a $5.6 million contract by NASA to build a small, speedy lunar rover called Moon Ranger. 
According to Astrobotic, the autonomous rover will weigh only 13 kilograms and could land on the moon by 2021 or 2022. According to press releases by NASA and Carnegie Mellon, Moon Ranger will be the size of a suitcase. It will be taken to the moon via Astrobotic's lunar lander Peregrine. There, the robot will operate autonomously on week-long missions within one kilometer of its lander. It could search the moon's polar regions for ice or lunar pits and produce detailed 3D maps of the moon's terrain. Data gathered by Moon Ranger will be relayed back to our planet via radio once the rover returns to its lander. This is because the rover is too small and is unable to carry a radio powerful enough to communicate with Earth. Moon Ranger is one of 12 proposals selected by NASA as part of its Lunar Surface and Instrumentation and Technology Payload Program. It is scheduled to head to the Moon via NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Project. According to NASA, these projects would allow the U.S. Space Agency to get a better understanding of the Moon and explore more of its surface as NASA prepares for its Artemis Moon mission in 2024. NASA has unveiled next-generation spacesuits suitable for both men and women for the Space Agency's 2024 Artemis III lunar mission. One of the spacesuits, called the Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit, or XEMU, will allow for an increased range of movement for the arms, wrists, hips, and knees while astronauts are on the lunar surface as the suit uses bearings instead of zippers. The XEMU spacesuit features a backpack called the Portable Life Support System, similar to the one used during the Apollo moon landing missions in the 1960s and 1970s. According to NASA's website, the spacesuit's communication system inside the helmet has been redesigned to include multiple microphones on the inner part of the upper torso that will automatically be activated as the astronaut speaks. NASA says the new spacesuits will allow astronauts to perform longer spacewalks, withstand moon dust, and the moon's extreme temperatures ranging from negative 250 degrees to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The space agency said the increased mobility of the astronauts is to perform different scientific tasks such as analyzing moon rocks or planting scientific instruments. Though one thing remains the same. Astronauts will still be required to wear a diaper-like garment during long spacewalks just in case they need to relieve themselves. NASA also debuted its second spacesuit called the Orion Crew Survival System, which will be used by astronauts during launch and re-entry in the Orion spacecraft. The suit features a lighter helmet which connects to the communication system more easily, improved thermal protection, and a new interface that removes carbon dioxide and supplies air to the crew members wearing the suit. NASA says each astronaut will have a customized spacesuit to ensure a better fit and a better range of motion. These lunar missions are part of NASA's plan to eventually make its way from the moon to Mars in order for humans to explore the red planet. NASA plans to send a robotic rover to search for water ice at the moon's south pole in 2022. The Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or VIPER, will be roughly the size of a golf cart. According to a NASA news release, Viper will collect data for roughly 100 days as it uses the neutron spectrometer system to detect wet sections underneath the moon's surface. Once such an area is detected, Viper will deploy a 1-meter-long drill to dig for oil cuttings that are up to a meter underneath its surface. These drill samples will then be analyzed by two other instruments carried by the rover, the Mass Spectrometer Observing Lunar Operations, or MSOLO, and the Near Infrared Volatile Spectrometer System, or NERVS. Viper will also gather data on how different kinds of soil environments on the Moon's south pole are affected by sunlight and different temperatures. The data will allow the space agency to map out places where water could potentially lie on the Moon. NASA says that water extracted from the Moon could be used for fuel in rockets or be turned into oxygen for astronauts. Viper is part of NASA's Lunar Discovery and Exploration Program. Space.com reports that NASA will send astronaut dummies around the moon in the Orion spacecraft for the uncrewed Artemis I mission scheduled for next year. According to the outlet, NASA says the goal of the mission is to test a new piece of equipment designed to protect female astronauts from space radiation called the AstroRad. According to Space.com, NASA's physiological models indicate that women are more vulnerable to radiation exposure health risks than men. 
According to the European Space Agency, the pair of phantom dummies named Zohar and Helga are fitted with over 5,600 radiation sensors. Zohar will wear the Astrorad protective vest, and Helga will not, which will help researchers evaluate the effectiveness of the vest. Makers of the radiation vest, a company called STEMRAD, say the vest protects the breasts, bone marrow, stomach, ovaries, and other vulnerable organs that contain stem cells via its variable thickness shielding. According to the Tel Aviv-based contractor, the contoured shields are solid polymer shielding elements that are arrayed in a scale-like structure. According to the German Aerospace Center's Thomas Berger, Though the vest is designed for women, the garment could be adjusted for males. STEMRAD claims its vest could allow astronauts to leave the Orion Solar System storm shelters to perform important tasks during a solar storm. According to the company, the vest significantly reduces cancer and other fatal radiation exposure risks for astronauts. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.